there's something in economics called the middle income trap, which is you can get from low income to middle income pretty directly, assuming you're not utterly corrupt. Uh, you bring people in from the cities. Sorry, you bring people in from the country. You bring them into the cities. You build housing. There's nothing luxurious about it. It's not much more than a dormitory, but they have housing. They have public transportation. They can get to work. They do assembly style manufacturing. We're not talking about, you know, the German auto industry. We're talking about like Lego style manufacturing where you put things together. Um, you know, the people that well, they make iPhones. Well, they do make iPhones, but all the parts are made elsewhere. They're they're made in Germany, South Korea, uh, Japan. Um, and elsewhere, actually 26 countries for the iPhone, and China just puts them together. It kind of assembles it, puts a case on it, and ships it out. Um, so that's, I don't want to say easy, but that's pretty direct. But then the question is, how do you get from there to high income? Meaning, you know, $20,000 a year per capita or higher. Um, the answer is you can't do it the way I just described. That's middle income. To get to high income, you have to have a high technology and high value added. You have to invent stuff. You have to find things that are highly scalable, that are original. The Chinese are not good at that, and neither is anybody else. There are only a couple countries that have ever pulled this off. Uh, Singapore is one, uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, uh, Japan. Although Japan's, you know, they they had a highly educated population before World War II. They were decimated in World War II, but then they when they came back, they had a lot of foreign investment, but they had a well-educated population. So, uh, so it's very hard to do. So China's stuck there. So you can't just take those growth figures and go, oh, by 2031 they'll pass this. What's happened is it's leveled off. Now, China is not. China has slowed down a lot. They've gone from 10% to seven in ter term of annualized growth. They've gone from 10% to 7% to 5%. They're stretching right now to get to 5%. And then, in addition to that, you have to look at the components of growth. So it's consumption, investment. Uh, government spending and net exports, um, and you know there are different many uh, sub components in that, uh, including inventories and um, and a lot of other categories. But uh, China, uh, the United States, for example, is about 70% consumption and 20-25% uh, uh, in investment, and then the rest is government spending and net exports, which are very small. Factors. I know we have a trillion dollar deficit, but we you know, get a certain amount of uh, that. That's that's you know a trillion in in the context of a twenty three trillion dollar or twenty five trillion dollar economy. So uh, it's uh, it, it's not a big factor. But um, uh, with with China, it's different. They their investment their consumption factor is down around twenty five percent, but their investment factor is forty five percent. Now investment's not a bad thing. If it's productive, if you're going to invest in things that have higher output than the cost of funding, um, that's a good thing. You'll you'll grow. It's not even a Keynesian multiplier. It's just a smart investment, uh, and that's true for some infrastructure and you know building your first airports and your first high-speed railroads and all that. But China has gone way, way, way overboard in non-productive ways. Again, I mentioned I've been to China a number of times. I've seen these ghost cities. I've, I've been in them. I've walked through empty buildings, and the Chinese. You know, the communist uh, people with me, they tell me, you know, well, we're going to fill this up. This is the future Los Alamos of China, whatever. And I'm like, guys, there's wow. nobody here. Nobody here. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're like, well, we're, they're coming. You know, they're coming. So my, my point being, they've wasted it. So if you take the 45% of GDP that's investment and you assume half of it's wasted, and I think that's a good estimate, and you use general accepted accounting principles, you would write that off. Um, they don't, of course. They just count. I mean, there is... There is real steel and aluminum and concrete and cement and jobs. That's all real, but when they're done, there's there's nothing there. I mean, they've got a building that's empty, uh, that's not producing any revenue, or a railroad station with 125 escalators that are mostly empty. Um, so, so they're probably if you adjust for that, they probably they're probably in a recession already, probably have been. But now the numbers, even without making that adjustment, the numbers are coming down very fast. So, whether China is technically in a recession or not is almost irrelevant. What is relevant is the fact that their economy is slowing significantly. A lot of the growth you see is wasted growth, so it's not going to pay off. Um, they're doing all these stimulus plans, and Wall Street keeps saying the Chinese are doing stimulus. Buy Chinese stocks. I mean, Wall Street just wants to sell you stocks, but uh, stimulus doesn't work. You can call it stimulus, but it doesn't actually work. Uh, because you're you're wasting the money. So, China is um, either near a recession, 
But whether it's technically in a recession or not doesn't matter because it's slowed down so much. Uh, it's not going to contribute to world growth, and the Chinese will barely be able to, uh, um, you know, kind of take care of themselves, let alone dominate the world. Um, which puts Xi in a box because um, the, the Chinese have a concept called the Mandate of Heaven, very intangible, very kind of spiritual, whatever. But they do, in effect, do the people believe in the leadership? That's the Mandate of Heaven. If you lose it, you're done. And Xi, you know, a lot of senior people are disappearing.、Um, they're either being killed or imprisoned or demoted if they're lucky or put in jail, whatever.、Um, so th- th- those are signs of a guy who's not very secure. So I don't, as much as、um, Xi ran rings around Biden at the summit, I don't put a lot of stock in China. I think they're、um, they're slowing down a lot. They're going to take、mm-hmm. the world with it. What do you think? One last question on China. What do you think their next move is? They don't have any moves、uh, because.、Uh, They're they're an export powerhouse, but the smart U.S. companies and there are a lot of them. They're moving to India. Apple's moving to India.、Uh, the、uh, U.S. foreign direct investment is、uh, pivoting to Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, India,、um, and elsewhere. A lot of it's being sourced back in the United States.、Um, our our labor costs are not、uh, put it differently.、Uh, So-called foreign cheap labor. First of all, it's not really cheap because it's not as productive. But even if it, it, the productivity goes up,、um, it's not a lot more expensive than in the U.S. And you got transportation costs. So、uh, a lot of major,、uh, I mean, tens of billions of dollars are being invested in the U.S. semiconductor industry in places like Arizona, Oregon, Texas,、uh, elsewhere. That money is not going to China, whereas it might have in a different different time. So.、Um, And if China relies on exporting to the rest of the world, what happens when the rest of the world slows down and they don't buy their exports? And then China doesn't—they never brought up their consumption game. They、mm-hmm. wasted the investment game, and foreign investment starts to move elsewhere. What are they going to do? I, I think they're in a very difficult spot. They can avoid a recession by lying about the data, which they also do. But、uh, in, in real terms,、uh, no. Now let's let's define recession. Let's put it in the Chinese context.、Uh, China had been growing at double digits, 10 percent or more, sometimes 15 percent per year, compounded for 15 years,、uh, going all the way back to、uh, 1990. 1994 was really the takeoff point. You know,、uh, Deng Xiaoping、uh, did some major reforms beginning as early as 1979. There was good growth in the 80s. My first、uh, visits to China were in、um, the early 90s. I was there,、uh, not, not kind of Taiwan, because I've been there a number of times, but、uh, mainland China, you know, Shanghai, and I actually get out in the country,、um, and you know, south of Nanjing and.、Uh, Been to Xi'an, Wuhan. I've been to Wuhan. I was the kind of ground zero for the pandemic,、um, up and down the Yangtze River. So,、uh, so I've been around China, but I started in 1991, and、uh, so that's you know like 30 years,、uh, over 30 years ago. Um, but um, there were no there were no Americans there. I could I ran into Brits, Australians. You run into Australians everywhere you go,、uh, some Germans, but no Americans because it was not long after Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square was. 1989,、uh, the U.S.-China relations went into a deep freeze.、Um, again, no, all my, I, I didn't meet an American while I was there. They, they just weren't around.、Uh, but it was really 1994 when things took off, and through 2008, China just grew enormously from a very low base. So you, you get that kind of you know double-digit compounding. Yeah, that's that's an enormous growth, but from a low base.、Uh, but if you go back to 2000. Oh, the 2007, to, you know, kind of before the、uh, the global financial crisis.、Uh, you know, if you picked up the Economist or the Financial Times or the New York Times, whatever, they would say, well, China's China's going to surpass the United States、uh, in terms of economic output. And、they were even giving dates, which is a simple extrapolation from the data. They're saying, you know, 2031, 2032, whatever it was. You know, the U.S. is growing like this, China is growing like this, and China is going to surpass. And I, I said at the time. That that was nonsense, and the reason is that, yeah, that was the growth track record. But you can't just extrapolate from that.